So Janelle mentioned some stuff about reviewing. Debugging anything that's important. So um, let's go through some topics. So topics are debugging on server side to um, security and structure. Uh, what are some other topics you guys want? Uh, can you do an association uh, with uh, uh, foreign key? Foreign key. Okay. Yeah. Associations. Any else? Okay. Cool. So let's start with debugging. So let's take a look at uh, travel secure. And towards the end of the course, I'm gonna show you guys some more advanced stuff, like stuff that's super, super new, even newer than like React and stuff, like um, uh, GraphQL, like the newest, newest way of using like, uh, basically like another version of how to use APIs instead of just RESTful. RESTful is like the latest and greatest, but like this is even later than that. Um, it's a newer thing by Facebook. And I'll teach you guys some like testing stuff and all that if you have some time. So right now, Mm. Let's go into running Travel Secure. So this is the advanced one, but it's pretty much the same thing. Start, actually npm start. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is run this locally. Okay. And so notice that I have all this being displayed. All this locking is actually done through Morgan. So Morgan is a logger. logger. So if I go to my server JS, uh, notice that I'm using Morgan and I'm calling it as logger. So uh, let's see. So what's happening is um, I'm saying use this logger uh, in the dev environment. So this doesn't get used in um, my production environment, but when I want to test things and uh, see if anything runs into an error, so let's try breaking something. Uh, let's call this like pricing as, so it doesn't make any sense. So if I then go to pricing, nope. Oh, I'm on NPM start, that's why, okay. So if I go to pricing, um, I'm gonna get the error being displayed. So it's a 500, that means it's a server error, that means um, it's not being displayed correctly from the server. So I fix that and once I run it again, I should be running this through Notamon, let me just fix it. Ah, uh, shit, but this is required for node without Nodemon is required for the server. So what I'm going to do is run dev Nodemon. Yeah, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is do npm dev, wait. Yeah, oh, sorry, npm run dev, there we go. Cool, so now I'm running it through node one. So npm start will run this script, npm run and anything else you put in here will run that command. 
So I made it so npm run uh, dev will execute Nodemon and run it from the www file. And uh, all of my logging is done on this side. So you see all the issues that could occur uh, on the server side. So this is a good way of debugging things and being able to see what issues are happening on the server side. So if I have any console.logs, obviously that's going to show up here too. But um, I, I can see everything that's happening with uh, all the results uh, when I'm using Morgan. So that's a really good, to, uh, good tool to use for debugging. Um, let's see, what else? So, security and structure. So security and structure I talked about a little bit. Uh, why don't we start setting up some security and structure? So uh, on my users, what I want to do is, um, on the client side, I actually have the security set up OK. I mean, you can't really have security on the client side. So information comes in. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, anytime there's a post, um, I'm going to say, OK, uh, let's, let's just create the check here. It's not great to do it here, but um, I'll separate it and modularize it into a function later. So um, I'm going to put if user, let's see, if. Rec dot body dot username. Let's see if type of string and So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up some uh, checks on the server side, so in the controller, uh, before the information gets run there. Uh, and I'm going to put all of this in there. So this is really crappy to do because this is a lot um, in one if statement. Uh, and I could do some further validations, like make sure that the email is following like the email thing, the username has only six characters and the password matches the following and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any like bad characters in it. I, I could do all of that and I'd probably separate that into a function where, you know, do, you know, check stuff. And then it would pass in like, you know, username, email, uh, password. And then from there, what I could do I can just put this in there. Now I can separate it out. So if this is incorrect, then it's going to spit it back. So it would be like something like return uh, username is incorrect. And then what we could do is return this function. Um, and I can just say something like const. Uh, Result equals this, and then if the result is you know uh, has anything bad, um, then I would just do you know res dot json something else like res dot. Actually, I could just do it like this.
And then I would separate all the different checks into something like that. So on and so forth, right? So username is not following string or blah, blah, blah. So essentially these would all be checks and I would run this check stuff like check stuff rec.body.username rec.body.email. So these are arguments being passed into the function. And then uh, if check stuff is good, um, then basically uh, we would just get something like console.log at the end over here it says all checks are complete on form and then it'll just go to the next part. So this is just something I would do. Um, so the question was about you know security and things like that and adding security layers. The only security layer I didn't add was this controller part. So this is a, a simple version of that. Um, and again, this would probably exist in a helper. So I would have another folder. No, not in there. Oh, in here. Stop creating things. Oh, okay. Um, Omar, are there like packages that can do this uh, without us having to actually like type it up? Yeah, there are. There's, um, but I don't know if it's gonna be. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there are, but this is very specific. Uh, let's see. Can't you just let me create? Oh, it's so annoying. Okay. Uh, we're going to helpers. Helpers. Helpers is going to have file. And let's just say, what are these? Um, I don't know. Uh, Validation. So take this. Uh, user registration validation. And now you just include this. Uh, some syntax so that is for what is this for? Ah, butts. I messed up somewhere over here. Can you guys please put your stuff on mute? It's like random music just randomly coming on. Um. What am I missing over here? Oh, I put this whole thing under here, yeah. That's all right, okay. Cool. So that'll be it. Let's see, is it all working? Uh, I'm not running it. 
Yep. So just go through there, and then if, that's, if there was something wrong, then it would go through the validations, and uh, it would have to check through all of that. So there's a bunch of validations you can do on the input coming in, um, but that's what I would do, something like that. Does that make sense? So that was for Sean. So um, client side, we already did some. So client side, we had uh, there's some validation here. Um, so basic validation, and then a check that comes back and displays. Uh, otherwise, we just post the information up. Um, so it's just going to go to the controller. So I want to make sure that in my controller, I have something that's secure. So in my user's controller, I have a check. The user registration validation check is checking to make sure that the information coming in is all secure and not like some SQL injection and all that stuff. Um, and then what I do is I then have a validation on my model. So if I look at user model, um, I have validations on there as well. And bada bing, bada bing. So any questions about that? Um, so in each case, whenever the validation fails, mm -hmm. do you display the same error message to the user or How's that part? Work? Yeah, yeah. I, I display a different validation error depending on um, what happens. Okay. So this is a very basic version. I could have a function. Yeah, yeah I could just do if else statements here. That's fine. There's only three things we're checking username, email, and password. So it checks through each one. You could further separate them into functions like check email, check username, check password, you know, check through all of them. If they're all good, then you get all checks are complete on form. Otherwise, you send, um, send it back. I might actually need to send the response object to this function. So what you might need to do, yeah, I think I need to send the response object. So send response which is coming from here. And then where the hell is it? Here it is. Response. There you go. Make it a sense or not make it a sense? Let's see on the chat. Make it a sense. Okay. All right. So then let's go to the next part. Um, authentication. So authentication is a big one. Uh, let's go into that. So for this application, I used uh, Passport JS to make the authentication a lot, uh, lot more structured. I wouldn't say easier, um, but a lot more structured. So my authentication comes in place um, inside of, so if I go here, um, let's see, you would start off. Um, let's go to login sign up. And you go to register. And you go to any one of these. And once you register, um, it will uh, authenticate you. So um, my client side, to take a look at it, um, what's happening is in my public, I have this sign up. So what's happening is um, I first do all these validations that you guys have already seen, right? Uh, hopefully you guys have gone through this. It's pretty simple. It's just jQuery that just checks to make sure everything's okay. Um, and then 
um, I send that information as part of a post. So all it's doing is a post. So from the client side, it's making a post request. Uh, from that post request, it goes to my controller. So my user's controller, I go to sign up user. Um, so obviously, this is you know not just going directly to sign up user. It's going through uh, www file, then it's going to server, then it's going to go to the routes file, and my routes file is then going to take me to users, and the users route is then going to go to sign up, and that's going to hit the users controller dot registration page. So then I go to users controller dot um, uh, registration page. It's going to display this. Um, once I click on a post for um, something, when I hit the submit button with the AJAX call, um, it's then going to go to uh, where's my routes. So then it's going to go to sign up, which is then going to go to sign up user, and sign up user is going to go to here. So this is sign up user. Uh, so first it's going to find uh, everything that has username, and if it matches that username, then it goes to this part, uh, and this is the part we were on. So if there if the username already exists, then I return duplicate user, um, which is my own custom thing that I made. So it's just it's just a property. And on my client side, uh, where's public? There it is. So if there's a duplicate user, then I have a stupid alert. Uh, I need to convert that into a modal. Because alerts are really shitty. But I'm, I'm really lazy, too. I'll do that at some point. So, hey, someone do that. Someone submit an open source ticket and fix that. All right, uh, Janelle, you can do that. So fix this into a modal. All I have to do is submit a pull request, and I'll take a look at it. Um, make sure you fork the repository, and you can merge that in. It'll be your first open source contribution, maybe. Um, all right. Uh, so then I go back. So if the user is not duplicate, then what I have is uh, the user being created on the server side, uh, sorry, on the database. So this goes to the model. So it's gonna try and create that. So again, it's going to do this check that I just made. Uh, and then it's gonna check on the database side. So it checks the database side. So we go to the database, so we go to the model. It's going to check against all these. Um, and what's actually happening, though, uh, the password is actually important to understand because we're not just storing the password as a plain text. Um, if you guys go to my database and I go to travel secure, uh, even on local, if I go to users, I have no idea what their passwords are. It's a hashed. Uh, encrypted alphanumeric. And it doesn't mean anything unless you have the uh, key to translate it. So what's happening there is, what is this? Oh, OK. So what's happening there is um, when the password is sent in, I have a before create hook. And what that says is take the user.password, um, and this is going to be equal to bcrypt.hashsync. So it's going to use the bcrypt library. It's an encryption library. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to encrypt this password. Um, and then I'm going to generate a salt. A salt is just a random alphanumeric that generates randomly and gets added. Um, and uh, it gets added to the password. So each password, not only is it encrypted, but it has this random alphanumeric added to it. So if someone did uh, break the encryption algorithm, it kind of like makes it even more difficult to then figure it out. It's like, wait, ah, oh, god damn it, they put a salt after it or in between it or something. Um, so it then stores this user.password as that. So the callback password uh, is, uh, then stored as this user.password. So when this password gets uh, created, 
um, and stored into the database, it actually gets stored as uh, this encrypted password, which is what you see over here. And how, how does the decryption happen? Yeah. Where, where does that happen or how? The encryption part, uh, yeah, and Aaron's right, yeah, the salt, it's also for encryption purposes too though. So like the salt will also help with the security, but that's a really good point about the um, people having the same password too. Um, otherwise you're gonna generate the same encryption each time as well. Yeah. And sorry, what were you saying? Uh, where and how does the decryption happen? So the decryption- Where is the encryption key? Here. So this is the valid password. So um, what happens is, uh, I, uh, I don't wanna get to that yet because right now we're just still just creating the user. So we'll get to this part. This is the part where it does that. Um, or this is the method that you can use to check against that. So what happens is this gets stored into a database like this. And um, at this point I could have logged in the user, but I still didn't. Um, I probably will. I probably change it so that it does log in the user. But what I do is um, when I register, so let's just say boogie, boogie butt, and then I put like, you know, something stupid. You know, miwo.com. One, two, three at mewo.com. So it doesn't check against like real domains, but it does check against um, perceived uh, domains. So what it, what it thinks is the right um, format. Uh, so I register. Excellent, nothing's working. Rec is not defined. Good. Why do I need rec? Validation, oh, stupid validation. Yeah, I, this needs to be fixed way more. So I'm not even gonna use this here. I just use it as an example, but I really need to like, really make it work. So I haven't really tested it. I'm just gonna comment that. Um, Boogie butt. Oh, sorry, and yeah, dot com. Boogie butt, uh, and then what happens is after this is created, um, the model sends the response back to the controller. The controller then says, okay, redirect. Um, at this point, I could have authenticated the user. Uh, so this is probably where I will authenticate the user. If you guys were like, well, at this point, I wanna authenticate the user instead of having to go here and then having to put in like, boogie butt and then the password is a very secret password to me and then they're authenticated so now you're probably wondering well how did the authentication work right so now we go back to client side so client side is going to be here and login yeah here it is. okay Blah, blah, blah. So you log in with the username and password. Um, so it makes a post to users log in. Yeah, it doesn't actually have to be a post because I'm not changing anything. I could have made this like a get request, but yeah, it's fine. I'll send it as a post. Because every time I send in a password, I always want it to be sent as a post. Um, cause that's just like secure information. So server side, uh, of course it's going to go through bin www server.js. Then it's going to go to routes. 
Then it's going to go to the appropriate relics file, which is users. And that's going to go to the user's login and the controllers. So login user. So um, notice that uh, blah, 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 blah. So this is going to do this uh, res.json uh, and come back. So you might be thinking, it's like, well, I don't get it. Like, why am I, why am I able to just like log in uh, if this is just like saying go back uh, to this forward slash? So um, let's see, controller. So I think I have in the routes. Yep. So um, what I did was I did something a little tricky. Um, so in the uh, router, uh, I put, I used Passport. Um, so Passport um, is authenticating. So it uses method called Authenticate. It's part of Passport. Uh, and it's using the local method for authentication. Um, and from there, uh, what it's doing is it's going to go to the user controller uh, login user. So um, because this is run first, you're going to actually have to take a look at what this is uh, inside of how Passport works. So Passport.js is a library that allows you to um, utilize different strategies, basically different ways of um, authenticating. So strat each strategy represents a different form of authentication. Local, meaning like username, password, uh, Google auth, um, there's like Facebook auth, there's like every kind of auth basically that Passport offers. So it makes it a lot uh, more seamless to do so. So if we go to Passport.js, uh, that's under something. Where the hell did I put it? Uh, that's what I get for not remembering stuff. Config, yeah, config. So uh, if I go to password.js, you'll notice that the local strategy is the one that's going to get called. So I have to put it in the configuration, um, and I have to, uh, when I call it, um, so... Uh, I go to my routes. Notice that I'm including um, passport. Um, and so passport, what it's going to do is uh, it's going to check for this config passport. So that's where I like putting it. I think it makes sense to put in this configuration. Uh, and that's how I'm able to use Passport to authenticate. I think it, it's a meaningful place to put um, authentication information um, or authentication setup. So this is how I set up my authentication. So if someone um, logs in, then the information goes through here first. Um, so we can determine like how they get signed in, but this is actually a default uh, parameter that's, or sorry, default property that's being used by, uh, by Passport. So I'm going to use the username field username. Um, and from there, what I'm going to do is uh, it's going to find that username uh, from the model. So uh, again, we're just going to change these all to fonts. So um, it's going to find this from the model, uh, and it's going to say, OK, well, do we find that username? Say, oh, OK, cool. We found the username. Otherwise, we say, oh, no, incorrect username. However, if we did find the username, then we check the password. So this is what the valid password that was asked. I think Levon was asking about this. Um, how does it know it's a valid password? So this is going to check the password that was sent in from the client side against the password that exists in the database. So the client side, it's unhashed and unencrypted. However, if we look at the database, what it's going to come back with in our controller, or not, it's in our model, sorry. We go to our model, and we have this uh, instance method. Instance methods basically mean that you can act on an instance of a model that was instantiated and utilize a, um, a uh, method from that. So for example, if we go back to Passport.js, 
uh, notice that we have this DB user. So uh, DB user came back, right? So we, we called, we looked for one, uh, and if that user came back, then we have that being saved as DB user because it's being returned in this promise. So this DB user is just that row um, that's being returned. Um, and we can just check things against it. So we say DB user dot valid password. And we pass it the password um, that we have and check against the one in the database. So this valid password actually has something that's built in from bcrypt and it's just going to check the password that you pass it against the password from the model or and which is going to get it from the database so um it unencrypts it uh decrypts it uh checks against them and if they match then you're good so you can just plug and play that one without really having to do any like algorithmic stuff and if they don't match, then it says incorrect password and it returns and, you know, you would just send back an error. Um, otherwise, uh, you say, oh, okay, return done and then go to DB user. Uh, so you return the user and this would then go to the next part of the route, which is where the hell is it? Damn it, users. All right, so then it goes to the next part of the route. So it returns this, goes to login user. And that's just going to return this um, root page. So um, I'm sending back a JSON of a forward slash. Uh, and then I'm using that on my client side. So if I go to my client side now, man, this is so long. Just explaining this as well. Okay, so back on my client side. So now after I logged in, then I take this information that I passed in. So I passed in that forward slash, right? Authentication is pretty complicated. So I passed in this forward slash. So I say window.location.replace. So all I'm saying is, take the location that I have over here and replace it with um, wherever I'm at with just the forward slash. And that refreshes the page. And then I sent back an error. So if I send back an error, then it's gonna say incorrect username and password. And that's my authentication for registration and login. So questions about that? Did everyone fall asleep? This is all being saved, by the way. I'm recording all this. No questions looks easy. <laughs> OK, thank you. Did it at least make somewhat sense? Yes. <laughs> okay. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, programming is hard, but it's fun. Why do you do all of the, uh, like, do you have any gets, the get uh, request in the uh, authentication? I think all of the requests are post, am I right? I think that's, you know, I have a lot of get requests. So, I have, if I go to my router control, where is my router? <laughs> no, I mean just for users. For, oh, for users? Yeah. No, I have two. I have two gets. Two gets. Okay. Sign, yes. sign out and sign out. And also, another thing, Omar, you have two roads. Like, oh, one, one is get, one is get. Okay. okay. So any other questions? I think someone is asking you a question behind you or something. Uh, yeah, Omar, I have a question. Um, yeah. So when you get authenticated, mm -hmm. you're logged in and it takes you back to the root, uh, 
how where does it like change somewhere that now you are logged in and now you're able to see your trips or like where does it go from there like how does it go to the roots but but now you're able to see your trips so how do i go okay so uh, the question is, how am I able to see my trips after I authenticate? So now that I'm logged in, um, the authentication part that displays this information is actually pretty simple. So um, when, I, when I go back and I make a request, so remember when I logged in, it said to do this one client side, uh, what was it, public? replace the data with the forward slash. So that made a get request to the which path, if this is going to forward slash. Oh, oh okay, yes, now I got it. Yeah, so, so where is it going to? Oh, it's going to the root again. Yeah, so if I make a request to the root. And uh, now it checks if you are authenticated and now you are authenticated, okay. Yep. yep. So I, I go back to root and I go to application, so application. And then uh, in this index, uh, I render index. Uh, and in index, I have, wait, where is it? Oh, it's in my nav. Sorry, it's in my partials. So if I go to nav, if is authenticated, is true, then it'll display my trips and user sign out. And that if is authenticated, uh, I think runs, where did I put it here? So it runs before anything else. So every time you make a request to the server side, um, it's gonna go through here first. And it's gonna set auth check to true or false. I also have something else called sessions being run, I think. So, I'm not sure if I'm using sessions right now, actually. But yeah. Okay, so finally, let's get to associations. So we have associations. And I have associations between the user and the trip. I'm actually going to, I'm not going to change this. I'm going to change trips a little bit. So um, this makes sense. User has many trips. And um, as soon as a user is deleted, their trips are deleted, which makes sense. You don't want the trips to exist if the user doesn't exist anymore. Um, and the trips has a belongs to relationship with the models.user. Now, this is an older way of doing it. The newer way is just using uh, SQLize dot associate, but the rest of it's the same. Um, hey, the main question I had was that when you have um uh, you have a ID and then you have you have the foreign key mm -hmm. um, I still wasn't clear um, do you have to do something to to make that association between no uh, foreign this will associate it when you sync the models this will actually generate the user ID column inside of trip I uh, will generate the okay uh, if you weren't using SQLize, how, how is that done in SQL? Uh, if you're doing SQL, then you have to set primary key and you have to set foreign key. Uh, that would be done. That would be a manual association. So there is a, I think it's like, um, when you run this, you can actually do that. So, uh, da, 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 da. no, it's not showing that here. Where is it showing it? 
When you first run SQLize, and if you run it with force true, um, what happens is it'll show all the things that happen, and it will actually show you all the different uh, SQL syntax if you're using Morgan. So it will show you, like, in here, like, this is the, the thing that's actually being executed using SQLize uh, into your MySQL database. Okay, so basically but, there's a SQL, they just run a query and associate two tables to each other. Yeah, and you only have to do that like once. Yeah, it's only going to have to do it once. And uh, but if you run force true, it's going to keep doing it over and over. It's going to keep resetting your tables. Okay, I guess you don't, don't want, want it. production. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, where is it? General. Okay. All right. So, I think that was it. So hopefully everyone learned a little bit today. Maybe not, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, I have recorded everything. So um, I'll upload it as soon as I can. And I hope everyone has a lovely morning. Take care everyone.